بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وآله وصحبه أجمعين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Hadith number 271. We're still in the chapter of... We're in the chapter of the ibadah of the Prophet ﷺ. What type of worship did the Prophet ﷺ used to do? Can, can, can the ladies hear me well? Huh? Tayyib. Hadathan ibn Abi Umar akhbarana ma'anun an malikin an ibn shihab nahwahu haa. وحدثنا قتيبة عن مالك عن ابن شهاب النحو حديث نمبر 272 حدثنا هناد بن السري حدثنا هناد بن السري أخبرنا أبو الأحوص عن الأعمش عن إبراهيم عن الأسود عن آئش رضي الله عنها قالت كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي من الليل تسع ركعات آئش رضي الله عنها she said the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to pray at night nine ركعات Hadith number 200, uh, 272, number one, uh, another version of it. Hadith number 273. Hadithna Muhammad ibn al Muthanna akhbarna Muhammad ibn Ja'fari. Ja'afirin akhbarna shu'batu an Amr ibn Murra. An Abi Hamza rajul min al Ansari. An rajul min Bani Absin. عن هذيفة بن اليمان رضي الله عنه أنه صلى مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من الليل قال فلما دخل في الصلاة قال الله أكبر ذو الملكوت والجبروت والكبرياء والعظمة قال ثم قرأ البقرة ثم ركع فكان ركوعه نحو من قيامه وكان يقول سبحان ربي العظيم سبحان ربي العظيم ثم رفع رأسه فكان قيامه نحو من ركوعه وكان يقول لربي الحمد لربي الحمد لربي الحمد ثم سجد فكان سجوده نحو من قيامه وكان يقول سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى ثم رفع رأسه فكان ما بين السجدتين نحو من السجود وكان يقول رب اغفر لي رب اغفر لي حتى قرأ البقرة والآل إمران والنساء والمائدة والأنعام الشعبة الذي شك في المائدة والأنعام قال أبو عيس وأبو حمزة اسمه طلحة بن زيد وأبو حمزة وأبو جمرة الضباعي اسمه نصر بن إمران so in this narration, it mentions that the Prophet ﷺ on authority of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, it says that the Prophet ﷺ, he prayed at night. And when he entered into his prayer, he said, Allahu Akbar. The dua that he made at night time was, Allahu Akbar, dhul malakuti wal jabaruti wal kibriya'u wal azama. He made this dua. Oh, uh, naam. Then he recited Surah Al-Baqarah. After, of course, reciting what? Al-Fatiha, right? After reciting Al-Fatiha, of course, then he recited Surah Al-Baqarah, kamil, and the whole Surah Al-Baqarah. Then he made ruku' and his ruku' was the length of what he recited of Surah Al-Baqarah and all he was saying was Subhan Rabbi Al-A'la, I mean Subhan Rabbi Al-Azim. Showing you that not only did he pray long, he prayed with a type of focus. That he's just saying Subhan Rabbi Al-Azim. But he's thinking and he's pondering over this over and over. Subhan, how perfect is Allah Al-Azim. How perfect is Allah free from imperfections Al-Azim. As long as he recited Surah Al-Baqarah. Right? Then... He made, he rose up from his rukur. And he stood in his qiyam here after rukur, which they call it atidal, right? He stood there as long as he was in rukur or in Baqarah. So he stood there also, right? Saying, Rabbi alham, saying, oh, for my Lord is the praise. Then he made sujood. And his sujood was as long as his qiyam, as long as he stood. And he was only saying what? Subhan Rabbi al-A'la, Subhan Rabbi al-A'la. Then he raised his head. And then the time between his raising of his head from the first rakah and the second, the first sujood and the second sujood was still as long. So every movement of the salat, he's pausing in it and giving his due rights long, lengthy. And he said, Rabbi Ghfilli, Rabbi Ghfilli. And then he recited all throughout the night, Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, Al-Nisa, Al-Ma'idah, and Al-Am. And Shu'bah, who's one of the narrators, he, 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 was confu- he, he had some confusion or some doubt whether it was Ma'idah and Am or not. But for sure, he was sure about Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, and Nisa. Hadith number 274. Hadathna Abu Bakr, Muhammad ibn al-Nafi, and al-Basri, you akhbarna Abdul Samad ibn Abdul Warithi, an Ismail ibn Muslim al-Abdi, an Abil Mutawakkil. 
An Aisha radiallahu anha qalat qama Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi ayatin min al-Qur'an laylatan. That Aisha radiallahu anha, she said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sometimes would stand all night reciting one ayah, one ayah, one ayah, pondering, reflecting over that ayah. Sometimes you're reading an ayah, and this ayah has a lot to do with you, or something that you're working on, you keep thinking about it, you think of the greatness of Allah, or the forgiveness of Allah, or the punishment of Allah, and you keep reading it, reading all night, pondering over this one ayah. And this is a benefit too, to realize that it's better at times to read one ayah of Qur'an, right? It's better to read one ayah of Qur'an, complete, than to read the whole Qur'an, without pondering over it. So it's better to read the whole Qur'an, one ayat of Qur'an, complete, than to read, what? The whole Qur'an without pondering it at all. Nah. Hadith number 275. Hadathana Mahmud ibn Ghaylan, Hadathana Sulaiman ibn Harb, akhbarana shu'batu an al-a'masi an Abi Wa'il, an Abdullah radiallahu anhu, qa sallaytu laylatan ma'a Rasulullah s.a.w. falam yazal, qa'iman hatta hamamtu bi amrin su'in. قيل له وما هممت به قال هممت أن أقعد وأدع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عبد الله on authority of Abdullah this hadith is on authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas عفوا عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه the Abdullah here is Abdullah bin Mas'ud and he said I prayed one night with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so long he kept standing he kept standing and reciting. He kept standing and reciting till I had, you know, thought about it. You know, I had made a. I was thinking about doing something bad. He said, "I, I thought about doing something bad." Be So they asked him, "What were you going to do?" He said, I, "I thought about sitting down and leaving the Prophet I said, I'm alone standing. I just couldn't handle it anymore." Subhanallah. Hadith number 275, Hadathna Sufyan ibn Waqi' and Akhbarna Jarir an al-A'mashi nahwahu. Same thing. Hadith number 276, Hadathna Ishaq ibn Musa al-Ansari, Hadathna Ma'nun Akhbarna Malikin, Akhbarna Malikun an Abi Nadlin. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. عن أبي النضري عن أبي سلمة عن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يصلي جالسا فيقرأ وهو جالس فإذا بقي من قراءته قدر ما يكون ثلاثين أو أربعين آية قام فقرأ وهو قائم ثم ركع وسجد ثم صنع في الركعة الثانية مثل ذلك. This narration says that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on the third of عنها this when he became older. But this does show you the ease that the sharia comes with, right? That the sharia would rather, for the voluntary salawat, that you pray even if you have to pray sitting down, right? And we tell the people that sometimes during uh, tarawih, right? That it's better that a person sits down and prays the tarawih than they stop praying at all. You know, sometimes you see some people just sitting in the back, I'm tired, and they go sit in the back. It's better that they continue to pray sitting down than they do what? Then they don't pray at all. That's the sharia. But some people, they, they're confused. And they'd rather sit down, they'd rather go sit in the back and don't do nothing, and they lose off the whole ibadah, instead of they could have sat down and prayed, and continued to pray. So in this narration it says, that the Prophet ﷺ, he used to, sit, he used to pray sitting down at times. And he used to recite while he was sitting. So if there was something left of his recitation about 30 ayat or 40 ayat, then he would stand and recite the rest of that standing. Then he would make sujood and rukur, and he would do the rest of his salat the same way. So again, instead of losing off the whole ibadah, Pray sitting down. At least you beat the shaitan a little, right? You beat him. That you didn't leave off the ibadah. But I think, you know, in my mind, I think sometimes the reason why people are afraid to pray sitting down is because they don't want to look lazy, right? But the shaitan tricks you. He makes you skip over one thing to go to what's worse than it. So a person is afraid to look lazy, but then they don't pray at all. Subhanallah. Do you see the point? So we have to have fiqh in our deen. We have to have understanding of the deen. Always trying to beat shaitan. We're always trying to beat shaitan to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always. And we have to pay attention. Hadith number 200 ish. 200 and what? 77. Hadathna Ahmad ibn Wani'i. Hadathna Husaymun akhbarna Khalidun al-Haddau. An Abdullah bin Shaqiq in Qala sa'altu Aisha radiallahu anha an salati Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an tatawu'ihi. Faqalat kana yusalli laylan tawilan qa'iman wa laylan tawilan qa'idan. Fa idha qara'a wa hum qa'imun raka'a wa sajra wa huwa qa'imun. Wa idha qara'a wa huwa jalisun raka'a wa sajra wa huwa jalisun. Similar narration. 
Hadith number 278. Hadathana Ishaq ibn Musa al-Ansari yu hadathana ma'nun hadathana malikun an ibn Shihabin an al-Sa'ib ibn Yazidah an al-Mutallib ibn Abi Wada'ata al-Sahmi an Hafsata zawj al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qalat kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusalli fi subhatihi qa'idan wa yakra'u bil surati wa yaratti wa yurat wa yaratti luha hatta takuna atwala min atwala minha the prophet sallam hafsa radiyallahu anha who's hafsa the daughter of umar jazakumullah khairan hafsa said that the prophet sallam would pray at night he would pray his voluntary subhati he here it means his voluntary salawat so we learn a principle that it's permissible for a person to pray his voluntary salat, not his obligatory salat. His voluntary salawat, sitting, even if he might be able to stand, right? But he's tired. He's not, he don't have a broken leg, but he's tired. But he doesn't want to abandon praying the voluntary salat. He can pray the voluntary salawat, sitting down, and get half the reward. Better than what? Getting no reward, right? So she said the Prophet ﷺ will pray his voluntary salawat sitting down. He will recite a surah and he will yarat means that you know Alhamdulillah Rabbil Al. He will make a slow recitation, right? Slow measured recitation. And it will make a surah that is shorter normally than another surah seem longer than another one. Make sense? طيب. حديث 279 حدثنا الحسن بن محمد الزعفراني أخبرنا الحجاج بن محمد عن ابن جريج قال أخبرني عثمان بن أبي سليمان أن أن أبا سلمة بن عبد الرحمن أخبره أن عائشة رضي الله عنها أخبرته أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لم يمت حتى كان أكثر صلاته وهو جالس. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم didn't die until by the time he died, majority of his salat he prayed sitting down. Majority of it he prayed sitting down. By the time he was sick, this was during his old age. Hadith 280. Hadathna Ahmed ibn Mani'in. Akhbarna Ismail ibn Ibrahim. Hadathna Ayyub an Nafi'in. An ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. Qala sallaytu ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Raka'ataini qabla al-zuhri. Wa raka'ataini ba'daha. Wa raka'ataini ba'da al-maghribi fi baytihi. Wa raka'ataini ba'da al-ishai fi baytihi. This narration says that Abdullah ibn Umar. He says, I prayed with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the voluntary salat during the day. I prayed with him two raka'at before al-zuhr. Were two raka'at after it. Two raka'at before, after Maghrib in his house and two raka'at after Isha in his house. The general rule is that praying in the, your voluntary salat in the house is better than praying it outside. Why? One, so you have barakah in your house. Another reason? It's more private. Now, nah, it's more private. It leads to you. We should always try, well, inshallah, to have more private deeds than public deeds. We should try to have more private deeds than public deeds. Hadith 271, 81, Afwan. Hadathna Ahmed ibn Mani'in, hadathna Ismail ibn Ibrahim, hadathna Ayyub an Nafi'in, an Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, qala sallaytu ma'a Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raka'ataini qabla al-zuhri, wa raka'ataini ba'daha, wa raka'ataini ba'da al-maghribi fi baytihi, wa raka'ataini ba'da al-ishai fi baytihi, same narration. Hadith 271, 81, 81, Afwan. قال ابن عمر وأخبرتني حفصة أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يصلي ركعتين حين يطلع الفجر وينادي المنادي قال أيوب أراه قال خفيفتين. This narration says that Abdullah bin Umar he narrates on his sister. What's his sister's name? It's Abdullah bin Umar's sister's name. Huh? What? حفصة his sister. Now he narrates on his sister, the wife of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to pray two short ركعات. Before, when the, when the, when the Mu'addin made that down for Fajr, he would make two short, light raka'as before he comes to pray the actual salat. Hadith 272. 82. Afwan. Hadathna Qutayba ibn Sa'idin. Hadathna Marwan ibn Mu'awiyat al-Fazara al-Fazariyu. An Ja'far ibn Burqan. An Maymun ibn Mihran. An ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. Qala hafiftu min Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tamani raka'atin. Raka'ataini qabla al-zuhri. Wa raka'ataini ba'daha. Wa raka'ataini ba'da al-maghribi. Wa raka'ataini ba'da al-isha. Hadith 282 again. Qala ibn Umar. Wa haddathatni hafsatu radiallahu anha. Bi raka'ati al-ghadati. Wa lam akun arahuma. Min al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, and Hafsa told me about. Two more raka'ah before Fajr time, that I mean before the obligatory Fajr that I wasn't able to see because he did it in his house, right? Hadith 283. 
حدثنا أبو, سل... أبو سلمة يحيى بن خلف أخبرنا بسر بن مفضل عن خالد الحداء عن عبد الله بن شقيق قال سألت عائشة رضي الله عنها عن صلاة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قالت كان يصلي قبل الظهر ركعتين وبعدها ركعتين وبعد المغرب ثنتين وبعد العشاء ركعتين وقبل الفجر ثنتين So we see that these narrations keep mentioning the same tatawwa. We need to make sure that we at least in our voluntary salat, if we at least are doing these, right? Because these were the ones that the Prophet ﷺ stayed upon the most. So we need to be doing these at least. So that's two raka'ahs before dhuhr, two raka'ahs after dhuhr, two raka'ahs after isha, two raka'ahs after maghrib, and two raka'ah before, before what? Before fajr. That's ten raka'ah, okay? Hadith 284. Hadathana Muhammad ibn al-Muthanna akhbarana Muhammad ibn al-Ja'far akhbarana Shu'ba an Abi Ishaq kala sami'atu Asim ibn Dhamra yakulu sa'alna aliyyan radiallahu anhu an salati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam minal nihar. Fakala innakum la tutiquna thalika kala kulna man ataka minna thalika salla. Fakala kana idha kanat al-shamsu min ha huna kahayata. كهيئتها من ها هنا عند العصر صلى ركعتين وإذا كانت وإذا كانت الشمس من ها هنا كهيئتها من ها هنا عند الظهر عند الظهر صلى أربعا ويصلى قبل الظهر أربعا وبعدها ركعتين وقبل العصر أربعا يفصل بين كل ركعتين بالتسليم على الملائكة المقربين والنبيين ومن تبعهم من المؤمنين والمسلمين حديث نمبر 285 the, the chapter of Salat al-Duha. Salat al-Duha is a Salat that's prayed, what time? After the sun rises, right? About the length of a spear, and then up until a, a little bit before the Zuhr time, you can pray this Salat al-Duha. Now. حدثنا محمود بن غيلان أخبرنا أبو داود الطيالسي أخبرنا شعبة عن يزيد, عن يزيد الرشكي قال سمعت معادة قالت قلت لعائشة رضي الله عنها أكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي الضحى قالت نعم أربع ركعات ويزيدها ما شاء الله the prophet Aisha رضي الله عنها was asked that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to pray صلاة الضحى and she said yes he would pray four ركعات and he would increase on that whenever he whatever Allah wanted حديث نمبر 286 حدثنا محمد بن المثنى أخبرنا حكيم بن معاوية الزيادي حدثنا زياد بن عبيد الله بن ربيع الزيادي عن حميد الطويل عن أنس, عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يصلي الضحى ست ركعات The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says that he used to pray six ركعات of صلاة الضحى حديث نمبر 200 87. حدثنا محمد بن مثنى أخبرنا محمد بن جعفر أخبرنا شعبة عن عمرو بن مرة عن عبد, عن عبد الرحمن بن أبي ليلى قال ما أخبرني أحد أنه رأى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي الضحى إلا أم هاني رضي الله عنها فإنها حدثت أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دخل بيتها يوم فتح يوم فتح مكة فاغتسل فسبح ثماني ركعات ما رأيته صلى صلاة قد أخف منها غير أنه كان يتم ركوع والسجود This narration mentions that Um Hani Who's Um Hani? Abu Talib's daughter Who's sister? Ali's sister Barak Allahu Feekum They said that This narrator Abdurrahman ibn Abi Layla He says No one informed me that the Prophet That they saw the Prophet Said him pray salat al-duha Except for Um Hani and she said, radiallahu anha, that the Prophet sallam entered her house on the day that he conquered Mecca. He made a ghusl and he, he started to pray eight raka'at. And she said, I did not pray, see him ever pray salat so akhaf, light, meaning like it was a, a faster speed. Except that also he still made sure that he completed his record in sujood. He wasn't bouncing up and down. He completed his record in sujood, but it was faster than she normally saw him pray. Hadith 288. حدثنا حدثنا ابن ابي عمر حدثنا وكيع حدثنا كهمس بن الحسن عن عبد الله بن الشقيق قال كنت لعائشة رضي الله عنها اكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي الضحى قالت لا الا ان يجيء من مغيبه they asked Aisha رضي الله عنها in this narration did she ever see the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم pray the did she ever see him pray the duha prayer 
She said no. But we have another narration where she said yes. The scholars, they said that maybe I, sallallahu anha, didn't see him pray it before, but she was informed of it later on, so she informed the people that she did pray it. So one narration, she said she never saw it. Another narration later on, she might have been informed of it, and she told the people that yes, he did pray it. Hadith 289, Hadathina Ziyad ibn Ayyub al-Baghdadi yu akhbarna Muhammad ibn Rabi'a an Fudayl ibn Marzuqin an Atiyya an Abi, Isha, an Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu qal kan al-Nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusalli al-Duha hatta naqul la yada'uha wa yada'uha hatta naqul la yusalliha In this narration it brings some more information. It says that Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray Salat al-Duha. What time does Salat al-Duha come in? Huh? After, no, no, it's about when a, a spear, when the sun becomes about the length of a spear off of the horizon, right? So the sun is up. It's not just risen, but it's up off the horizon, right? Until, around, until a little bit before Zuhr. So the, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he says, the Prophet used to pray Salat al-Duha so much so that we thought he would never leave it off. And then sometimes he would leave it off for so long that we thought he would never pray it. Sorry? Hadith 290. Hadathana Ahmed ibn Mani'in akhbarna Husaymun akhbarna Ubaidatu an Ibrahim an Sahm ibn Minjabin an Karatha'in al-Dabbi aw an Kaz'a an Karatha'in an Abi Ayyub al-Ansari anna Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yudminu arba'a raka'atin inda zawal al-shamsi fakuntu ya Rasulullah inna ka tutminu hadhi al-arba'a raka'atin inda zawal al-shamsi fakala inna abwaab al-samai tuftahu inda zawal al-shamsi fala turutaju hatta tusalla al-dhuhr fauhibbu an yas'ada li fi tilka al-sa'ati khayr kuntu afi kulli hinna kira'atun kala na'am kuntu hal fi hinna taslimun fa'asilun kala la Hadith 290, حدثنا أحمد بن منيع أخبرنا أبو معاوية أخبرنا عبيدة عن إبراهيم عن سهم بن من جاب عن قزعة عن قرطع عن أبي أيوب رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نحوه حديث 291 حدثنا محمد بن المطنى أخبرنا أبو داود أخبرنا محمد بن مسلم بن أبي والضاح عن عبد الكريم الجزري عن مجاهد عن عن عبد الله بن سائب رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يصلي أربعا بعد أن تزول الشمس قبل الظهر وقال إنها ساعة تفتح فيها أبواب السماء فأحب أن يصعد لي فيها عمل صالح. The narration mentions that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to pray four rakaah before the time of dawn, right before the time of dawn will come when the sun is going, uh, the sun is reaching its zenith, you know, the highest part. And he would say, "The in the has sa'atun tuftahu fi abwabu jant sama." This is an hour that, or a time, doesn't really mean an hour. This is a time that the doors of heaven are open. So I would love, I love that my deeds are raised, my righteous actions are raised during this time. Hadith two hundred and ninety-two. Hadathna Abu Salama Yahya bin Khalf, Khalf, Afwan. Yahya bin Khalf. Akhbarna Umar bin Ali al Mukaddami. عن مسعر بن كدام عن أبي إسحاق عن عاصم بن ضمرة عن علي رضي الله عنه أنه كان يصلي قبل الظهر أربعا وذكر أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يصليها عند الزوال ويمد فيها. The chapter of the of the of the voluntary salawat of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in his house. Hadith number two hundred and ninety-three. حدثنا عباس العنبري حدثنا عبد الرحمن بن مهدي عن معاوية بن الصالح عن عن الألاء بن الحارث عن حرام بن معاوية عن عمه عبد الله بن سعد رضي الله عنه قال سألت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن صلاتي في بيتي وعن صلاتي في المسجد قال قد ترى ما أقرب بيتي من المسجد فلا أن أصلي في بيتي أحب إلي من أن أصلي في المسجد إلا أن تكون صلاة مكتوبة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said they asked him about about salah in my house. One companion said, what's the, you know, what's the benefit of salah in my house or salah in the masjid? He said, you see how close my house is to the masjid. So I pray, but I pray in my, mes- in my house more beloved to me. The prayer that's in my house, that's done in my house, is more beloved to me than a prayer that's in the masjid, except the obligatory salah. Salat al-maktubah means the obligatory salawat. So the Prophet ﷺ was saying that, you know, even how close, regardless how close my house is, I mean, I could mean I can walk to the message. I can get to the message. It's right there, it's outside of my door, basically. But I prefer to pray my voluntary salawat in my house over the masjid. 
Babu ma ja'a fi sawmi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now here goes the issue though. Let's talk about an issue quickly. Let's say a person, if they, without a doubt, the voluntary salat in the house is better than the voluntary salat in the masjid. But what if you're the person that you know your energy level, right? You know your vigor. And you're more vigorous or more attentive to praying the salat as soon as you pray it. Let's say you pray the voluntary, you pray the obligatory salat. And you know that if you pray it right now, you'll get your voluntary salat in. But if you wait till you get home, maybe you'll get busy with something and you won't do it. Then you should pray in the masjid then, so that you don't miss out on it. Does it make sense? Babu ma ja'a fi sawmi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The chapter of the fasting of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith number 294. Hadathna Qutaybat ibn Sa'id and akhbarna Hamad ibn Zayd an Ayyub an Abdullah bin Shaqiq and qala sa'amtu a'ishad radiallahu anha an siyami al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قالت كان يصوم حتى نقول قد صام ويفطر حتى نقول قد أفطر قالت وما صام رسول 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 الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شهر كاملا منذ قدم المدينة إلا رمضان. This narration says the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم fast until we would say that he's always fasting and he would break his fast until we would say he's always not fasting and then Aisha رضي الله عنها she said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would never fast a whole month. Since he came to Medina, except for the month of Ramadan, Imam Al Nawawi, rahimahullah Taala, said that a Muslim should fast at least one one day a month, at least always should fast at least one day a month. Hadith number two hundred and ninety-five. Hadathna Ali ibn Hujrin, akhbarna Ismail ibn Jafar an Humayd an Anas an Anas ibn Malik and Allahu anhu, anhu su'ila an sawm al Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال كان يصوم من شهر حتى نرى أنه لا يريد أن يفطر منه ويفطر حتى نرى أنه لا يريد أن يصوم أن يصوم منه شيئا وكنت لا تشاء أن تراه من الليل مصليا إلا رأيته مصليا ولا نائما إلا رأيته نائما. طيب this narration is a very beautiful hadith showing the balance of the life of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and of course he could have did everything but it shows his ummah that everyone has different levels of energy. So the narration on Anas bin Malik رضي الله عنه he says that it was he was asked about the fasting of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he said the Prophet ﷺ would fast a month until we would consider that he would never break his fast. Then. He would always fast every day. And he would not fast some days so much so that we would consider him not to fast at all that month. And he said if a person was to wish to see him praying at night time, then he would see that. And if a person was to wish to see him sleeping at night time, then he would see that. Meaning that sometimes he would sleep at night and a person would be watching his slot and say, oh, the Prophet ﷺ is sleeping. And if a person was looking to find him praying, they would find him praying. Show you the balance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith number 296. Hadathna Mahmud ibn Ghaylan akhbarna Abu Dawood anba'na shu'batu an Abi Bishrin. Qala sami'atu Sa'id ibn Jubairin an Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma qal. Kana Nabiyu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yasumu hatta nakul ma yuridu an yuftira minhu wa yuftiru hatta nakul ma yuridu an yasumu minhu. Wa ma sa'ama shahran kamila mundu aqadim al-Madinata illa Ramadan. Hadith number 297. Hadathna Muhammad ibn Bashar an akhbarna Abdul Rahman bin Mahdi an Sufyan an Mansur an Salim ibn Abi Ja'adi عن أبي سلمة عن أم سلمة قالت ما رأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم الشهرين متتابعين إلا شعبان ورمضان. أم سلمة she said I never saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم fast two months consecutive back to back except for شعبان and رمضان. قال أبو عيسى هذا إسناد صحيح وهكذا قال عن أبي سلمة عن أم سلمة وروى هذا الحديث غير واحد عن أبي سلمة عن عائشة رضي الله عنها عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ويحتمل أن يكون أبو سلمة أبو سلمة أبو سلمة تبن عبد الرحمن قد روى هذا الحديث عن عائشة وأم سلمة جميعا رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حديث 298 حدثنا حناد حدثنا عبدة عن محمد بن عمر أخبرنا أبو سلمة عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت لم أرى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم في شهر أكثر من صيامه في شعبان كان يصوم شعبان إلا قليلا بل كان يصومه كله عائشة رضي الله عنها she says that she never saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم fast a whole so much a month besides Ramadan except for شعبان حديث 299 حدثنا القاسم بن دينار الكوفي أخبرنا عبيد الله بن موسى وطلق بن غنام عن شيبان عن عاصم عن زر عن عبد الله رضي الله عنه قال كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم من غرة كل شهر ثلاثة أيام وقل ما كان يفطر يوم الجمعة 
حديث 300 حدثنا أبو حفص عمر بن علي أخبرنا عبد الله بن داود عن ثور بن يزيد عن خالد بن معدان عن ربيعة الجرسي عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يتحرى صوم الاثنين والخميس These two narrations they talk about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم The first was that Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would fast three days of every month and then it said that he would almost not be found, never, not fasting the Yom al Jumu'ah. Now we have narrations that says that the Prophet ﷺ forbade singling out Jumu'ah for fasting. How do we combine between the two? That the Prophet ﷺ would fast Jumu'ah along with either Thursday or Saturday. He would fast it, combine it with another day. And the next narration says the Prophet ﷺ would always seek out to fast Mondays and Thursdays. Hadith 301. حدثنا محمد بن يحيى أخبرنا أبو عاصم عن محمد بن رفاعة عن سهيل بن أبي صالح عن أبيه عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال تعرض الأعمال يوم الاثنين والخميس فأحب أن يعرض عملي وأنا الصائم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the actions are presented in front of Allah on يوم الاثنين Mondays and Thursdays فأحب يوم الاثنين والخميس we should learn the days such as this. Yom al Ithnain wal Khamis. What's Yom al Khamis? It's Thursday, but better for us to say Khamis. Yom al Khamis, and it's better for us to say Yom al Ithnain. فَأُحِبُّ أَنْ يُعْرَضَ عَمَلِي وَأَنَا الصَّائِمُ So I love that my actions be presented and I am fasting. Hadith number 302. حَدَّثَنَا مَحْمُودُ بْنُ غَيْلَانَ أَخْبَرَنَا أَبُوْ أَحْمَلْ وَمُعَاوِيَةُ بْنُ هِشَامْ قَالَ أَخْبَرَنَا سُفْيَانُ عَنْ مَنْصُورٍ عَنْ خَيْتَمَ عَنْ عَائِشَةَ رَضِ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا قَالَتْ كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَسُومُ مِنَ الشَّهْرِ السَّبْتُ وَالْأَحَدُ وَالْإِثْنَيْنِ وَمِنَ الشَّهْرِ الْآخِرِ الثُلَاثَاءِ وَالْأَرْبَعَاءِ وَالْخَمِيسِ حديث 303 حدثنا أبو مصعب بن المديني عن مالك بن أنس عن أبي النضر عن أبي سلمة بن عبد الرحمن عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت ما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم في شهر أكثر من صيامه في شعبان similar narration we mentioned earlier حديث 304 حدثنا محمود بن غيلان أخبرنا أبو داود حدثنا شعبة عن يزيد من الرشكي قال سمعت معادة قالت قلت لعائشة رضي الله عنها أكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم ثلاثة أيام من كل شهر قالت نعم قلت من أي كان يصوم قالت كان لا يبالي من أي صام that the Prophet ﷺ will always make sure he fasted three days, and they asked him for what three days. He said he didn't really matter which ones, he just fasted three days. قال أبو عيسى ويزيد رشك هو يزيد الضبعي البصري وهو ثقة ورواء عنه شعبة وعبد الوارث بن السعيد وحماد بن زيد وإسماعيل بن إبراهيم وغير واحد من الأئمة وهو يزيد القاسم ويقال القسام ورشك باللغة أهل البصرة هو قسام. حديث 305 حدثنا هارون بن إسحاق الهمداني أخبرنا عبدة بن سليمان عن هشام بن عروة عن أبيه عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت كان عاشور يوما تصومه قريش في الجاهلية وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصومه فلما قدم المدينة صامه وأمر بصيامه فلما فطرد رمضان كان رمضان هو الفريضة وترك عاشور فمن شاء صامه ومن شاء تركه Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that the day of Ashura, what day is Ashura? MashaAllah, barakallahu feekum. That the Prophet sallallahu can Ashura, that the Quraysh, even the Kufa, the Mushrikeen of Quraysh, they used to fast the day of Ashura in the times of Jahiliyyah. And the Prophet sallallahu used to fast it as well. But when they came to Medina, he was fasting it, he fasted it there also, and he ordered the people to fast it. So when Ramad, but when Ramadan was obligated upon them, then he would fast, then Ramadan was the obligation, and they left off the obligation of Ashura. So whoever wanted to fast Ashura, they fasted it, and whoever wanted, whoever did not want to fast it, they didn't fast it. Hadith number 306. حدثنا محمد بن بشار أخبرنا عبد الرحمن بن مهدي أخبرنا سفيان عن منصور عن إبراهيم عن ألقمة قال سألت عائشة رضي الله عنها أكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يخص شيئا من الأيام قالت كان عمله ديمة وأيكم يطيق ما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يطيق they asked Aisha radiallahu anha that the Prophet sallallahu used to specify any days that he would do extra special actions. And she said the Prophet's actions were consistent. They were consistent. And which of you are able to handle what the Prophet sallallahu would handle from amongst worship? Hadith 307. حدثنا هارون بن إسحاق أخبرنا عبدة عن هشام بن عروة عن أبيه عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت دخل علي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
وعندي امرأة فقال من هذه كنت فلانة لا تنام الليل فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عليكم من الأعمال ما تطيقون فوالله لا يمل الله حتى تملوا وكان حب ذلك إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي يدوم عليه صاحبه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم entered upon his wife Aisha رضي الله عنها and she had a lady with him and he said who is this and she said she's such and such she doesn't sleep at night she's praying all night basically she don't sleep at night so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said rather upon you is to do the actions which you can handle and stay upon because Allah does not get يَمُلُّ Allah does not get Allah doesn't, Allah doesn't not get, Allah doesn't stop rewarding you for action or it doesn't, it never burdens Allah to be with, with, with rewarding you for action. But al-jazam and gentle amal, when you start to get bored with doing an action, then of course your reward is not going to, is going to be cut off from it and you're not going to be rewarded for doing the action anymore. So the things that were most beloved to the Prophet was that, what, how did they translate this word, Yamaldu, in that, in that translation? What does it say? Huh? Hadith number, um, what hadith do you have it as? 300? What, what does it say? Yeah. The whole, just read the narration to me. I don't really like this translation because Allah never becomes weary. So it doesn't really mean, it doesn't really mean, Yamul means like bored with something, but it doesn't mean it's for Allah. And I'm forgetting a good way to use it as a, as a meaning. But basically it means that Allah is not going to get tired of rewarding you for reward as long as you don't get tired of doing the actions. But of course Allah never gets tired. So it doesn't really mean that Allah gets tired. Now, nah. Hadith number 300 and, 308 and 309. Akhbarna Abu Hisham in Muhammad Yazid al Rifai. Well, an Nabi Rahimullah Ta'ala says about this that it means that Allah will not cut off his reward from you all and his 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 uh his uh his reward for your actions and he will deal with you in accordance to you not being bored with doing actions so it's a must for you to take upon what you can handle and be consistent upon so that your reward can be consistent upon doing it and your bounty will be upon you. So meaning that don't do something that today you're going to do it and cut it off tomorrow because then you're going to lose reward. You're not going to continue to be rewarded. So do the things that you're able to consistently do so that your reward can be consistent. Now, أخبرنا أبو هشام من محمد بن يزيد الرفاعي أخبرنا ابن فضيل عن الأعمش عن أبي صالح قال سألت عائشة وأم, وأم سلمة رضي الله عنهما أي العمل كان أحب إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال تما ديم عليه وإن قل they asked, the prophet, they asked these two wives of the Prophet ﷺ what actions were most beloved to the Prophet ﷺ and they said the action that a person was consistent with even if it's only a few, small amount. Hadith 310. Hadathana Muhammad ibn Ismail akhbarna Abdullah bin Salih hadathani Mu'awiyah ibn Salih an Amr bin Qais annahu sami'a Asim ibn Humayd qal sami'tu Awf ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu yaqul kuntu ma'a Rasulullah sallam laylatan fastaka thumma tawadda'a thumma qama yusalli فقمت معه فبدأ فاستفتح بالبقرة فلا يمر بآية رحمة إلا وقف فسأل ولا يمر بآية عذاب إلا وقف فتعوذ ثم ركع فمكث راكعا بقدر قيامه ويقول في ركوعه سبحان ذي الجبروت والملكوت والكبرياء والعظم ثم سجد بقدر ركوعه ويقول في سجوده سبحان ذي الجبروت والملكوت والكبرياء والعظم ثم قرأ آل عمران ثم سورة سورة يفعل مثل, مثل ذلك and this narration it mentions a very important point about the khushu' of the Prophet 
It says that the Prophet Sallam, when he would be, this companion, he mentions that I was with the Prophet Sallam at night time, and I was praying with him at night, night about it. So when he got up, he made, he made miswak, he brushed his teeth, basically, then he made wudu, then he stood to pray. So I stood along with him, and he began by reciting Surah Al-Baqarah, and he did not pass by any ayah that mentioned the mercy of Allah, except that he stopped and he asked Allah for that mercy. And he did not pass by any ayah that mentioned the adab of Allah, except that he stopped and asked Allah for protection from that adab. So it shows us that when we're reading, especially you know when we're pondering over the ayat, we shouldn't just pass by an ayah that's talking about Allah destroying somebody or his punishment for someone, except we reflect upon it that we ask Allah to protect us from this. And we shouldn't just pass by ayahs that talk about the mercy of Allah, except that we stop and ask Allah for his mercy. Now. Hadith, chapter The chapter that speaks about the recitation of the Prophet Sallallahu Hadith 311 ibn Sa'id an akhbarna laytu an ibn Abi Mulaika an Ya'la bin Mamlakin annahu sa'ala umm Salamata radiyallahu anha an qira'ati Rasulullah Sallallahu fa idha hiya tan'atu qira'atan mufassaratan harfan harfan they were, um Salama was asked about the recitation of the Prophet Sallallahu and she described it as a recitation that was you know Mufassar on here, it means that it was descriptive. It was like, you know, lo, every ayah can be made clear. It was clear. And every ayah was made clear. Every letter, excuse me, was made clear. Harfin, harfin. So it wasn't, it wasn't, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, it was, alhamdulillahi rabbil alami. You got to hear every letter. Hadith 312. Hadathna Muhammad ibn Bashar and Akhbarna Wahbu ibn Jarir ibn Hazim. Akhbarni Abi an Qatar taqal. قُنْتُ لِأَنَسَ بِنِ مَالِكَ and كَيْفَ كَانَتْ كِرَاءَةُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَالَ مَدًّا and he said that it was with med right الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين like this right big med hadith number 313 حدثنا علي بن حجر أخبرنا يحيى بن سعيد الأموي عن ابن جريج عن ابن أبي مليكة عن أم سلمة رضي الله عنها قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقطع كراءته يقول الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم يقف ثم يقول الرحمن الرحيم ثم يقف ثم يقول مالك يوم الدين is narration is Um Salam رضي الله عنه she said the Prophet Sallam used to stop between every ayah that he was reading he would say الحمد لله رب العالمين stop then he would say الرحمن الرحيم stop then he would say مالك يوم الدين نعم حديث نمر 214 حدثنا قطيبة بن سعيد أخبرنا ليت عن معاوية بن الصالح عن عبد الله بن أبي قيس قال سألت عائشة رضي الله عنها عن قراءة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أكان يسر بالقراءة أم يجهر قالت كل ذلك قد كان يفعل قد كان وربما أسر وربما جهر قلت الحمد لله الذي جعل في الأمر ساعة This is talking about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's recitation and his night salat and he said that sometimes he would make it loud and sometimes he would make it silently and the person he prayed so this is something that uh, we would know and as well we know that the, the people who are in the house normally can hear him but the house was only like one room so now in our situation the person that's in one bedroom if he's down in the living room that he's reading in a certain level that maybe the people that are in the bedroom can't hear them so it's not a loud screaming type of recitation it's just enough so he can hear himself and maybe the people who are in the same room or same home as him can hear him Hadith 315, Hadathana Mahmoud ibn Ghaylan, Akhbarana Waki'un, Akhbarana Mis'arun, An Abi An Abil Ala il Abadi, An Yahya bin Ja'ada, An Ummis An Ummi Hani in, Rodilahu Anha Kalat Kuntu Asma Ukira at Nabi Sar Salam bil Lail, Wana Ala Ari Shi. She said that I used to hear the Prophet Sallam reciting while I was in my bed. And in another narration is Firashi. And this narration comes that he was reading in the Kaaba and her home her home was close to it. She could hear him at night time reading. When he was in the Kaaba. Hadith 316. Hadathana Mahmoud ibn Ghailan, Akhbarna Abu Dawood, Akhbarna Shu'batu, An Mu'awiyat ibn Qurwa, Qala, Sami'atu Abdullah ibn, ibn Mughaffalin, Radiallahu anhu yakul, Ra'aytu al-Nabiyy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala naqatihi yawm al-Fathi, wa huwa yakra'u, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina, Liyaghfir Allah, Liyaghfir laka Allah, Ma taqaddama min dhanbika wa ma taakhar, فقرأ ورجع قال وقال معاوية بن قرة لولا أن يستمع الناس علي لأخذت لكم في ذلك الصوت أو قال اللحن نعم حديث نمبر 300 
17. حدثنا قتيبة بن سعيد أخبرنا نوح بن قيس الحداني عن حسام بن مسك عن قتادة عن قال ما بعث الله نبيا إلا حسن الوجه حسن الصوت وكان نبيكم حسن الوجه حسن الصوت وكان لا يرجع This narration says that, the prophet, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never sent a prophet except that he made him have a beautiful face and that he had a beautiful voice. And your prophet had a beautiful face and he had a beautiful voice and he didn't used to make turajir, meaning like he would like, you know, sometimes people go, ah, like that type of thing. That wasn't the way the prophet saw someone would recite. They said that turajir is when a person, you know, when they write or they read him, and they go, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Like this type of thing. You know, they make their voice vibrate in their throat. And they say that the Prophet wouldn't do like this. Nah. And Allah Ta'ala A'lam. Hadith number 318. Hadathna Abdullah bin Abdul Rahman, Akhbarna Yahya bin Hassan, Akhbarna Abdul Rahman bin Abi Zinad, An Amr bin Abi Amr, An Ikramata, An Ibn Abbas, and Radiallahu Anhu Makala Kanat Kiratu Nabi Sassalam Rubbu Ma Yasma Uham min Man Fil Hudrati Wahua Fil Bait. Naam. Hadith number 319, a chapter of The Crying of the Prophet Sassalam. Hadathna Suwaid bin Nasrin. أخبرنا عبد الله بن المبارك عن حماد بن سلمة عن ثابت عن مطرف وهو ابن عبد الله بن الشخير عن أبيه رضي الله عنه قال أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو يصلي ولجوفه أزير كأزير المرجلي من البكاء. Is it still recording? طيب. That سويد. عفوا. That this narration it says the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he was praying his chest. You know like a pot is boiling, that sound that a pot makes when it's boiling, that the Prophet's chest will be making this noise while he was reciting due to him crying. That's how he was deep crying, like, you know, that's real, <laughs> like, real deep crying. Tell you, 320, hadith 320. <laughs> Then Radiallahu Anhu Kala Kala Li Rasulullah Sassalam Ikra Aliya Fakuntu Ya Rasulullah Akra Aleika wa Aleika Unzil Kala in the Uhibu in the Uhibu and Asma'ahu Min Ghadi Fakarat to Surat and Nisai Hatta Balag to Wajit Nabika Allah Ula Ishahida Kala for a to Aine Rasulullah Sassalam Tahmilan. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he told me one day, read the Qur'an for me. Read to me, right? So he said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, am I going to read to you when it was revealed to you? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, I like to hear it recited from other than myself. So I recited Surah An-Nisa until I reached the ayah, وَجِتْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ shahida." And I noticed that the Prophet sallallahu his eyes were pouring down with tears. I heard Sheikh Abdul Karim, excuse me, I read Sheikh Abdul Karim al-Khudayr, he mentioned that at times people become affected by the Qur'an. Now, what's the difference between people really being affected by the Qur'an and sometimes you have people who are affected by ish, a voice. Some people are affected by a specific voice. How can you tell the difference if a person is actually affected by the Qur'an or they're affected by the voice? There's a difference. They said that a per he said that if a person hears an ayat of the Qur'an being recited and he has real khushur and he's pondering the ayat of Qur'an, regardless who's reciting and saying the ayat, he's going to cry. Because it's the ayah itself that he's crying about. Then you have some people, they're only affected by certain voices. And this is not the effect that, we're, that is expected, matloob, min al Quran. This is not the effect that's expected from a person with the Quran, that they're only affected by a certain voice. They hear a certain reciter, recite a voice, they start, oh, Allah. They hear it recited by another reciter, they sit there. So it's the Quran that we're supposed to be affected by. Yes, some voices move you more than others. But we have to find the khushur to understand the actual words of Allah. What is Allah saying? Right? And that's what should affect you, not the voice. Tayyip. Hadith.
طيب ان شاء الله تعالى we have roughly 50 more ahadith left alhamdulillah now ان شاء الله this is a three day weekend right yeah well sit down please this is a three, this is a three day weekend right so of course we want to take advantage of it unless anyone has anything to do anybody have anything to do no so we want to take advantage of it, inshallah. Is that okay with you all? Mm-hmm. So we have 50 hadith left, inshallah. Ta'ala. So what we plan on doing, inshallah, between Maghrib and Isha on Saturday. Oh, you know what? Subhanallah. We should use Friday too, just in case. That makes sense? So between Maghrib and Isha on Friday, we'll read as much as we can. Hopefully we can finish it. If not, then we'll come back and read on Saturday between Maghrib and Isha also, right? So between Maghrib and Isha on what day? Friday. And then between Maghrib and Isha on Saturday. Then we wanted to do a, 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 a one-day program on Sunday, inshallah, between, between Asr and Maghrib. Between what time? Between Asr and Maghrib, we're going to take the time to explain the hadith of Abu Zara and Umm Zara. Remember the hadith we were talking about the last week? Does anyone remember the hadith? The long one, right? They talk about the 11 women who were talking about the husband, right? It's very important. Well, I'll tell you why. Marriage in Islam is one of the most important aspects of deen. Sometimes we don't look at it, right? We think about, you know, how well we pray, how well we do everything else, and we don't look at the importance of marriage. But marriage is something that is extremely important in Islam. Where the Prophet ﷺ, he said that what? That the best of you are the best of those to their family, and I'm the best of you to my family. That's for the men, right? That the best of you, that the best of you are the best are those who are the best to their families, and I am the best amongst you to my family. So for the men, it's important that we learn and we struggle to be the best to our families so that we can be the best of the people, right? As well for the women, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that when asked about, a woman came to ask about the Prophet, she said, he asked the lady, how do you treat your husband? And she said, you know, such and such and such and such. He said, pay attention to how you treat your husband because he can be your Jannah or your Naar. He can be your fire or your Jannah. So on both spectrums, the men have to be careful about how they treat their wives and we have to be good. And on the other side, the women have to be careful about how they treat their husband because the husband can be for her, meaning he can be the path for her to Jannah or the path to her to the fire, depending on how she treats her husband. So we wanted to spend, you know, that time between Asr and Maghrib, inshallah. For all of you, you might think that you're young today, but we need to start bringing in the ones that are married or looking to get married. We need to know how to be husbands, how to be wives. It's something that's very important that we learn, especially living in today's times when we're stuck between two different extremes, right? What my culture says about how I should be a husband or a wife and what Islam says about how I should be a husband and a wife and then what America says about how I should be a husband and a wife. So we need to know the balance, right? What does Islam say between the extreme of what America says and the extreme of what my culture says? Does that make sense? Because we're Muslims. And we have to know the balance. In the way of Islam, as the Prophet said, we heard about him, that he was mu'tad, that he was mu'tad, that he was always balanced in his affairs. He wasn't extreme one way or extreme on the other way. He wasn't, a, you know, so we can't be American in our marriages or we can't be purely whatever this is in our marriages. We have to be Muslim in our marriages. Does that make sense? Tamam? So inshallah, that's an invitation for everyone. Invite any and everyone. Inshallah also will take questions and answers about important issues connected to marriage. During that day, it will be a seminar, a little one-day dawrah for us to learn about how we should be better husbands and wives and how we can prepare to be good husbands and wives. Okay? So that's going to happen on Sunday, inshallah. If somebody wants to bring some tea, cookies, you know, ahlan wa sahlan, you know, we're open for that, some sambusa, you know, whatever you decide, no problem. We're open for all of that. Um, but yeah, invite people, let the people know, because this is very important. It's a very important subject. Do you not think so, or is it not that important? What do you guys think? Is that important, or should we take a different title? Important? Tayyib, inshallah. May Allah bless it and make it successful for us. Um, we will, let me see, we'll stop here so that we can prepare for Isha, and we will resume Friday night, inshallah ta'ala. If we don't finish Friday night, when will we, when will we resume? Friday. 
Saturday night. Sunday between what time? So tell a friend to tell a friend. Act like it's a wedding. Tell the people having a wedding in the message, right? A lot of people will come. So don't tell them it's a class about marriage. Just tell them it is a wedding. You know, and then they'll come. They'll, they, huh? That's lying? No, we're, we're talking about, tell them, oh, it's a marriage. Just say there's something, there's some type of, ma- I don't know, there's some type of marriage thing happening in mischief. You know, a lot of time. A lot of people come, no, seriously, we need this, you know. May Allah make it easy for us. Our community, the Muslims, we really need to discuss how to be better husbands, wives, and prepare for marriage so that we understand, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakum Allah khairan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk.